So this video is going to talk about creating a job from an estimate. We'll also look at the different types of jobs we can run and when you should be creating a job and what that affects. So I'm going to click the create job button up the top and it'll pop up with just some standard info about this job which I put in earlier. Uh, in fact in the details screen. So it just wants us to confirm that. The expected start, this will drive our schedule and when it puts the first of the tasks on. If you don't know definitely uh, what date to start on, take kind of a rough guess at it because you can always change this date within the schedule screen later on. And below that box we have the invoice method or job type box and this is where you're selecting what type of job you're actually running. Quick point here is when you create the job you have to select this and this is the only chance you get to select this. So if you don't know how it's going to be contracted just yet, you can't really create the job. And also if you go past this and create the job and then want to come back and change the job type, you can't really do that. Uh, so this is a really important step just to confirm with BuildExact what type of job you're actually running. In this case, we're gonna do a contract price job, but I'm just gonna go through briefly what all three of these are. So contract price uh, often gets called method A and method B, and it's really a fixed lump sum um, where you are breaking it down into percents, so 5% deposit, 10% base, etc. And when I go into this, it will suggest that I use the default invoices. However, I can go and save my own. And uh, as we get more into the invoicing of this job, we'll go through that more in detail. Cost plus is the next one. So this is, oh, it gets called do and charge uh, as well. And this is where any cost that you incur, so you buy material, you have labor costs, they get passed on to your customer as an invoice, plus a percent, which you enter here. There's a separate video on this one. There's also a separate video on this third one, completion percent. But uh, in a bit of a nutshell, completion percent is good for a couple of things. One is if you deal with retention, this is where you'll need to be anyway. But even if you don't intend on using retention, you can still use completion percent because what it does is it gets a fixed lump sum and the invoices are generated instead of you saying, hey, it's 5% deposit, 10% base, you're able to say this fortnight or this month I did 50% of the frame and 20% of the plaster and an invoice will be generated based on those percentages. So it's really, really good for just doing you know, fortnightly or monthly or kind of progress based work and it's much more transparent um, than the contract price because you're showing the cost categories and how you're kind of tracking through them. Again, there's videos on these two types here. Um, so if you are using either of these, go and grab that video or the relevant video and you can learn a lot more um, from those there. This one, I'm gonna use contract price and I'm gonna say, yep, put the default invoices on and okay. And the final point I wanna make here is just when on earth should you be creating a job? Um, and this is a question we get a lot. So. When I do go into the job, I get this dirty big yellow bar um, just saying your estimate's not been accepted. And what this is trying to say is that you're in the job, but you haven't yet told BuildExact that your quote has been accepted, i.e. that you've signed a contract. For us, that's the same thing. And it is perfectly fine to be in the job before the contract's been signed. Uh, in fact, there's several legitimate uses for that. Um, one is that we will have people come in and work on their schedules, uh, of which there isn't much for me yet, but they'll work on their schedules and they'll send that out with their tender. We also get people who will um, go through and set up their invoices and send a summary of that out with their tender. So you can do quite a lot in here before the job's actually signed off. Um, however, once the contract is signed, we absolutely insist that you go and say here, click to accept the estimate and it'll pop up and say, is your estimate accepted? And you can just say, yes. I'm gonna go cancel just for now because I wanna show you one quick point, which is if I was back in the estimate anywhere, so let's say I was in the quote letter screen, I can do the exact same acceptance by using this drop down 
which has all the different statuses in it. And we've talked about this drop down in another video, but a quick summary, this is your way of telling BuildExact where the estimate is up to. And if you say it's accepted, this is the one that triggers it to go, yep, estimates accepted. Confirm your, your estimate is marked as accepted, which will lock it from editing. It also has a note to say that it opens up part of the quote request option where you can then send out messages to the winners and say, yep, thanks, thanks for playing. Um, we've picked you as the winner. But the thing I do really want to show you here is that once you do accept your quote, you are then locking it. So all the edit buttons disappear. In fact, really the only thing you can do is you can come back and have a look at takeoffs. And the only thing you can actually change is these P, S and T buttons. Mainly the T is the valuable one here because that's altering your schedule. But uh, the whole intention is you've put this figure on a contract somewhere. We can't let you get in a position where this figure doesn't match your contract because all kinds of grief comes from that. Awesome. So that's how you create a job and when you should do it.